my dogs and cats living together at the Terrier. Hey guys, welcome back to The Lucid Nightmare. I'm your host as always, Jay Schatzer. And today I've got a fantastic East Germany sci-fi flick. It is Gottfried Kolditz's 1976 surreal masterpiece. It is In the Dust of the Stars. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this is one groovy, weird, wild flick. So let's just sit back, relax, and take it all in. Here is in the Dust of the Stars. In the Dust of the Stars is a deliciously strange East Germany science fiction production that takes an interesting plot and cranks the weird to the max. Seemingly forged after someone's drug-induced trip, the filmmakers create a cast of characters that are both wildly entertaining and intriguingly obscure. If it's trippy sci-fi that you seek, then In the Dust of the Stars is right up your alley. The film follows the crew of the spaceship Cerno as it arrives on the planet Tem-4 after responding to a distress call that they received six years earlier. Upon arriving, they come to find that the people of Tem-4 deny the existence of the distress call and seem oblivious to any danger to their society, as they party down in some of the most eclectic and groovy sets known to the science fiction world, aside from Barbarella, of course. Disappointed over having traveled six years only to be laughed at and told it was all for nothing, the majority of the crew decide to head back home, but there's one man named Suko who isn't so convinced that the rulers of Tem-4 are being truthful about the distress call. Suko boldly defies the locals' orders and flies a reconnaissance shuttle over the planet in order to find the source of the mysterious beacon. To his surprise, he stumbles upon a conspiracy that not even he could have fathomed. This science fiction film's a strange little gem that has a whole hell of a lot of entertainment value. That is, if you're open to weird and wild cinematic civilizations. Alfred Strew plays the role of Suko, the suspicious cosmonaut who snoops into the business of the Tem-4 people and gets more than he bargains for. Strew does a great job as the catalyst of this film, as he pushes the story forward by delving into the mystery of the cover-up and inevitable reveal of what is really going on behind this strange new world. I enjoyed his restrained style of acting and felt that he gave an admirable performance that was both subtle and effective. Alongside him is Jana Brachova, who plays the role of Akala, the leader of the crew. Jana is simply amazing as the captain, and she gives such an expressive nature to Akala that you can't help but sympathize with her plight on finding out that they traveled all the way for nothing. She distresses over the futility of the mission, and is often in disarray over the meaningless of it all. But once revealed the truth, she becomes an outstanding hero of the film. I really enjoyed her portrayal of the complex character of Akala, and I enjoyed the complicated relationship that Suko and her shared throughout the film. It also didn't hurt that she looked strangely beautiful in this film as well. On to the baddie side of the fence, we have Milan Belly playing the role of Ronk, the no-nonsense son of a bitch who does everything he can to make the crew of the Cerno's life a living hell. I really got a kick out of Milan's approach towards Ronk. He's sadistic in every way possible, and he's always looking for a way to screw with the minds of the crew before he disposes with them. The boss of this batshit crazy organization is led by a man called the Chief, played by the ambiguous Egerhard Schall. This dude was born for this role, because I don't think you could find a more effeminate and peculiar man even if you tried. The Chief is not sadistic like Ronk, but he is extremely flamboyant and theatrical in his performance, with his ever-changing hair color to his obsession with stroking his oversized anaconda. The Chief is definitely a memorable character. I have to hand it to Eckerd because there really isn't anything like the Chief out there in sci-fi land, so the originality of his performance shines through and through every time. To keep up with this wild cast of characters, the film provides some amazing locations and sets that highlight the brash and vivid nature of the movie. Colors abound with a kaleidoscope blast, which mimics the overabundance of style that these flamboyant people of Tem-4 have. There's also a heavy use of obscure sets, most noticeably displayed in Chief's mirrored lair, 
which sets the audience's mind into dizzying fits whenever we are presented with it. The barren desert landscape that is represented as the desolate surface world of Tem4 is wonderfully shot, making you feel like you actually are visiting a distant planet filled with unusual sights and equally unusual inhabitants. That's one of the most accomplished aspects of the film, because the culture of the people of Tem4 is just out of this world. From lavish dances to otherworldly foods to obscure customs all the way to their strange sense of humor, the inhabitants of this world are a little bonkers. At first I was a little taken back by the strangeness of it all, but as the film progressed I came to dig the overtly wacky angles of the piece and felt that it perfectly mirrored the feelings that the astronauts were having when introduced to this strange and unfamiliar group of beings. In the Dust of the Stars really is an obscure wonder of a flick, as it opens up with a rather traditional premise of a space crew responding to a distress call, only to spin the narrative wildly out of control once we are introduced to the strange denizens of the planet. The entire cast does a spectacular job with the unusual style of the film, with Gianna Brechova, Alfred Struh, Eckhard Schall, and Milan Belli giving some exceptionally memorable performances. There's also a great deal of attractive females in this film, if that just so happens to be your bag. All in all, the production has a stellar style to it that really doesn't skimp on the wild nature of this new world, and the unusual look of everything is top-notch and absolutely decadent. If you're looking for something that's kind of out there and genuinely strange, then give this film a go. It's definitely one wacky sci-fi flick. And there it is, guys. In the dust of the stars. What else can I say? It's just batshit crazy. Hope you liked that one. Um, that's it for me today. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy what I'm doing here. If you do, please like and subscribe. And if you have time, please leave a comment below because as always, I'd love to hear from you. But until then, guys, I will see you at the next movie review. Take care.